Hi everyone, I'm Lou Collins and thank you for joining me on my channel. Today we've got another Distressing Canoxide colour combination video. We're looking at tumbled glass. This is a pale, kind of a baby blue, beautiful colour that I am going to be comparing to other colours in the Distress range and I'm also going to be giving you two colour combinations that you can go ahead and use at home. Everything I'm using is linked down below including all the tools of Distress Inks and Oxides and the free colour chart that you can download and fill in at home with the inks and oxides that you already have and saying that I always use oxides but of course Distress Inks will work in the same way. The colour combinations will be just as equally as good and um, um, you can use them all the same so don't worry if you've only got distress inks at home so I'd love it if you could hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button and we are working our way through the alphabet like I say tumble glass we are getting near the end of the distress oxide range and I've got quite a few different distress oxide and ink series in mind ready for when we finished this one so make sure you've subscribed to stay tuned to all of those okay the first thing we're going to do is swatch this color and I always do this with my blending brushes if you prefer to use blending foams for example don't worry it's all you know it's all very similar the colors essentially are going to be the same so tumbled glass is a beautiful name and such a soft color so let's just make sure we've got a nice bit of solid color so you can see always blending onto white cardstock for you so you can really see um, the true colors coming through look at that stunning absolutely stunning so looking at the label is very very similar okay it may be that this looks a little bit darker but in fact with distress oxides and distress inks they have dye in them so because they've got dye in them the dye kind of soaks into the paper the pigment element of oxides then sits on the top once that dye has soaked in and dried that's when you get the kind of the finished look and that's probably a little bit lighter a little bit kind of frostier cloudier than what the initial color is when you first put it down so looking at the label i think that would be pretty spot on really maybe a little more on the kind of gray side maybe a bit more of the cool side this is a little bit brighter perhaps but we'll see when it dries so if you're looking online for example or you're browsing around the shops obviously you're not going to be able to swatch these colors you're only going to be able to look at the labels and that's why i like to show you on the label how similar or not similar they are to what they really will look like okay so let's see what this looks like compared to others in the range like i say this is free for you to download from my website it's not filled in it comes black and white it does come with a strip with a template so that you can cut out the template ink through these perfect rectangles for your swatches and they're kind of in color groups as well so uh, i've laminated mine as you can see because i use them a lot um, but you've kind of got pinks reds oranges greens turquoises diff two different blues because you've kind of got yellowy greens i suppose there's yellows then greens then turquoise then blue then we're kind of going into mostly the purples then we've got one purple there but then into the browns the neutrals and lastly black on the end picket fence obviously i don't fill in because it's white there will be i believe one more distress color to be released at the moment we'll just have to see where that fits in i'm really hoping it's one that i can just pop on the end here we'll see when it comes out okay so tumbled glass there we go tumbled glass that is the color that we're looking at today as you can see one of the lightest brightest blues in the range let's just pull out the two that have any sort of blues on them for you so you can just see those together so there's tumbled glass now if we come down to speckled egg that's not too dissimilar more on the green side um but quite pale as well um cracked pistachio is also pale but much more green sourish patina is getting darker so other than that you haven't really got anything that i would be able to replace tumble glass with if i didn't have it but i think if you want to try out these color combinations i would suggest maybe try speckled egg and see now that like i say that is a bit more of a green um but so it's kind of cooler but do you know what see how it works and I'd definitely love to know in the comments if you have substituted any of the colours in these combinations for others that you've already got. 
So speaking of colour combinations, the first one is always tonal. The first one goes from light to dark within that colour. So um, we've got the lightest down already. That's our tumble glass. Then I'm going to go into Broken China. So this one has um, a bit of a green to it. It's definitely uh, as much, I think, green as blue. So I'm going to have to work hard at this because my brush could do with clean. So I'm trying to get into the habit of spritzing with water and brushing off any excess onto a piece of kitchen towel before I put my brushes away. Because if I don't, this is what happens. The bristles on some of my brushes will ha almost harden and it makes it a little bit harder for me to blend. Not impossible, as you can see, just not quite as smooth as I'd like. And the bristles don't really pick up the ink quite as well once they're dirty. But as you can see, when you get uh, a nice clean brush, the blending is much smoother. Those two, look at those two together. Stunning, isn't it? So I'm going to work Mermaid, sorry, not Mermaid Lagoon, Broken China down into there. That's taken me absolutely no blending effort at all, has it? Lovely. So just those two colours together are stunning. But let's add another pop of bright colour to the end here with Mermaid Lagoon. So this is our third colour. I'm just going to pop a piece of vellum underneath there. And look at this colour colour so beautiful if you love bright colours this one is often the blue that I choose for my rainbow combinations because it's so bright there we go now when I've got strong bright colour like this I try to fade it off before I reach the, the previous colour and then I take the previous colour and I take that up into it and this way I'm not overpowering that broken china with the mermaid lagoon i'm kind of bringing broken china up into it instead like so look at that there we go so there we've faded from tumbled glass into broken china and into mermaid lagoon for a beautiful blue ombre background now whichever way you decide to have this and as i say again because this is still damp it does look much stronger in this section, but it will fade to that lovely sort of cloudy oxide look very soon. So then let's do another colour combination. For this one we are sticking with the cools, but we're going to be introducing purple. And tumble glass isn't actually going to be the first one on my colour strip here. So I'm going to start with Stormy Sky, because this is more of a, a grey We've actually just recently released Stormy Sky video, um, so you'll be able to go back and check that out. In fact, absolutely anything that comes before Tumbled Glass alphabetically, there will be a video for. So you can see this kind of is almost a lilac as well. You could work this into purples very easily. I think the Tumbled Glass is going to sit really nicely between this and Shaded Lilac. So this is kind of a winter colour combination, colour theme. If you want to do something snowy, icy, cool, it will work beautifully with florals, of course, as well. I particularly think hydrangea. If you've got any hydrangea stamps or dyes, they will work nicely with this. So just going back over the two lines with what's already on my brush. Small circles always. There we go. Sometimes you just need to be gentle. Rather than adding more ink and pressing hard, just work gently in circles and the two will work together. I've, I'm yet to find many Distress inks or oxides that just won't work together. Obviously you have your reds into greens, you do get a brown mix. Sometimes those mixes are equally as nice. So let's then go into shaded lilac. So we're kind of starting to warm things up now. So we've gone from really cool into a slightly warmer colour here. Still works with the cools, with the blues, but of course this would easily then lead into a nice, I don't know, say a nice warm red, pink eventually. So just let's work those two lines. You can see how much stronger shaded lilac is than the tumble glass. 
So I'm just going to very lightly go over that line again. If you get to the point where you think actually there's just no blending going on, I need more ink, you can have a little more ink. Just a touch over there, then a little more ink for the tumble glass. Just got one patch in the middle there that I want to blend a bit more. I think that will blend some light. Oh, see, that's just too much. See, what I did is what I tell you always not to do is do not load your brush up with more ink and then go directly onto your blend line. There we go. So we all we all do it. I think I think I'm about there with that blend, looking really lovely. And lastly, I tend to put a nice pop of colour on the end, something a little more shocking, something with a bit of wow factor. That's going to be my dusty Concord. Now, because these are lighter colours, I'm going to just wipe these off my mat. I'm going to use my vellum here just to hold my strip still. And you can see how this would work into a pink if you wanted to continue the combination further. It could easily go into any pink then with that purple. Now I can really see there the uh, oxide sitting on the top for this one. I'm just going to blend in the shaded lilac. Because the shaded lilac is a lighter colour, I'm going to use that mostly to do the blending up into Dusty Concord. But sometimes, as I can see here, sometimes it's just overloaded with ink and the pigment just sits on top. So what I'm going to do is just brush this, give this a light brush. There we go. Take off some of that excess ink there. Let's get this down into shaded lilac. This one's taking a little more work than I'd expect considering they're quite similar colours, but we'll get there. There we go, I think that one just needs, yeah, it just needs to dry. We've got a damp patch there, but still a really beautiful combination. You now we've got two using the same colour and I always find it surprising how different this colour and this colour is the same colour. But when it's blended with different colours, obviously this one looks more toned down, more muted, paler, um, not as bright. But when this one's put against the broken china, which is obviously a brighter pop of green, it brings out the brightness of this one as well. Do you see what I mean? It really does lift it. So there's two new colour combinations for you to try. Uh, I'm excited to see what this one looks like actually when that's kind of dried off. Um, but you'll find that with the oxides because the dye part settles into the cardstock, the pigment sits on top. It takes a little while for everything to dry, a little bit longer than your Distress Ink dyes, dye inks. So um, just certainly have fun with these, but if you're ever unsure, just leave. Just leave your blending to sit aside to fully dry before you worry about, where well, has it worked? Has it not? Are you happy with it? So thank you everybody for joining me. I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel using this button just up here. You can find all those other videos just here in the playlist and anything that I've used you'll find in this link just up here. Thank you everybody, take care. I'll see you again for another Distress Combination video very soon.